signed to Stephen Poole. I purchased a 2019 camper, Sierra 38 FKOK from Camping World, Winston, Missouri. In good faith, valuable trade in, I traded in. And from day one, this company has done everything they could to put the fault on someone else and not take not the whole, whole thing on their own shoulders and, and take responsibility for their actions and for their workmanship. And I would say to anyone, if I've already said it before on other videos I put on YouTube, is run from Camping World. Do not deal with Camping World, especially in Lynchville, Missouri, because they will do everything they can not to abide by their warranty issues. Well, I went there. I'm trying to make this short and sweet as possible. I don't want to keep you on here all day. <laughs> but purchased a camper, I'd say roughly back in um, early March of this year. Um, as of today, right now, we're pushing um, three months that it's been in the shop as of right now. But uh, starting back early March, purchased a camper, uh, made a deal, went to the store, went to the camping world in Winsville, Missouri, made a deal. Um, we negotiated the numbers and all that for our trade-in camper. Did everything we had to do there. Had all the paperwork made out. They said, okay, we'll get your camper here. We, you know, we looked at the one they had on, on the lot. They said, this one's already sold. We'll order you another one. Well, we have one delivery date, they told me. I show up for the delivery, delivery date. Now, we're, now, I'll put this in perspective. I'm roughly a little over an hour away from where I live and where this place is. A little, just over an hour. First delivery date, I show up. Camper's not there. A no call. Nobody called me. Nobody told me nothing. I show up. It's not there. We're so sorry. We had a mix up. Da, 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 da. Excuse after excuse. They give me a second delivery date. Second delivery date. I show up again. The camper's not there. A no call. No warning whatsoever. They didn't tell me it wasn't there. The third time, <laughs> the camper. I call. They told me it showed up. I call. It's just to make sure it's there. Yeah, it's here. It's all ready to go. So I show up the third time. And when I show up, well, there's count, cracked countertop, broken stove, and a few other things wrong with the camper. And they said, oh, just take it and we'll, you'll bring it back. So I said, no, I bought a new camper. I didn't expect to buy a broken camper. Get me a new one. And um, so I refused that camper. About a week and a half later, they say, okay, we found another one at Forest River at the, on their lot. We're having a set to you. They're having a sense to you or whatever. I said, okay, fine. Well, again, I was agitated. And I went over and said, this is my God. fourth trip to your place. This better be right. Well, Forest River went over with, you know, everything and anything and everything they went over with to make sure it was correct. Everything working on it. Then we got it. We went over it ourselves too. We made sure it was working also. Everything, everything is, you know, picture perfect on it. Perfect. Well, we get there. Wife and I go over to camp or, you know, roughly whatever. And they first they tell us, well, when you get it, we're going to give you a two hour, about a two hour tour of the camp of an experienced person, show you how everything works. Well, that never happened. They gave, they gave me a guy who did a walkthrough with it. I knew more about the camper than he did, and he is an employee there. So that fell through. Um, walked over to camper. Wife and I agreed, you know, agreed, okay, we'll take this camper, we'll take it. We went to go sit down with a finance officer or whatever to take care of the paperwork. We are, again, like I said previously, we were there, already negotiated the trade-in value, already negotiated the price. They bring out the paperwork to start signing. The wife and I notice, wait a minute, something's not right here. There was a $2,500 increase in the sale price. that They, they raised the price, $2,500. bucks. i was like, no, wh wh where'd this price come from? I was, well, it's the price of the camper. No, it's not. This is the price we negotiated on. So I brought out the paperwork that I took along with us to show them, here, look, here's your handwriting, here's our handwriting, here's the price we agreed on. This is this number. This is the number that you're, you put on the, the finance papers of $2,500 more. So we had to renegotiate that, and they had to tear all that up and redo that again. So that was finally, you know, they finally had a camper, finally had a negotiated price. Of course, many things kept happening after that. Campers are campers. I understand that they have flaws, and you've got to take them back to stuff fixed. Well, one of the first times I took it back to get fixed, I took it out camping, and satellite wasn't working. Got my satellite TV to work. Well, took it back in. They realized that the panel on the outside of the camper for satellite hookup, the panel was there, but all the wires on the backside to be run to all the televisions, none of them were run. Forest River did not install them. Well, after arguing, negotiating with them, they said, okay, fine, we'll put, there's three satellite hookups. We'll hook up two, but you're going to pay for the third one. 
I was like, why do I have to pay for the third one? I purchased a camper with three satellite hookups. It'd already be there. SPNU and Forest River. You two need to argue who's going to pay for it because I'm not. So therefore, after two weeks of arguing, they finally agreed to go ahead and install the all the all the wiring for the satellite hookup. Jack the first trying to tell me I was going to pay for it when I said I already paid for it and purchased a camper. Well, in doing that, while they were looking at it, they they called me in the back to show me how the wires weren't hooked up. Well, my first step up into the camper, what do I see? I see a big old rip in my new, brand new floor. They had ripped my floor in the camper, camping world in Wentzville, opening the slide outs. So I yelled and screamed about that. So I'm like, well, oh, we're going to fix it. And they did. They fixed it. And whoever fixed it did a darn good job on it. So that was one of the times. Now, this major time I'm going on with, since this has been going on with the awning, I'll get to I'll start to explain it's been going on since June, it May, May or June of this past year. And here we are, December. The awning on the slide out, when you opened it up, there was a slide out. The awning above the slide out, and you open the slide out, out, the awning rested on the slide out, which then wear and tear would break through the slide, would wear through the awning. I argued with them, so it shouldn't be like that. Argued with them and Forest River going on nearly six months now. Finally, they agreed to fix it. They said, yeah, it's not right. The awning shouldn't be like that. And then, so Wentzville and Camping World, Wentzville and Forest River arguing back and forth who's going to pay for it. And I said, well, no, I'm not paying for it. You guys are. I'm going to should be, should be done right. Finally, they agreed, yes, it's a problem. Finally, they agreed, yes, they would fix it. So they called me up late June, early July, and said, hey, look, you know, bring the camper in. We're gonna, we, we'll, we don't care if Forest River pays for it or not. We're going to pay for it, and we're going to fix it. Okay, great. And I said, well, look, last time I brought this camper in for a fix, you told me it'd be a week. It was a month later before I got it back. I'm in the middle of a camping season. I like to get some camping in. I just bought, just bought this thing. Sure, sure, Mr. Poole, no problem. You bring it in when you're ready. I called them up late September. They said, okay, here, you know, everything's been approved. Bring it in September 27th. I said, okay, will do. I dropped it off September 27th. Two months later, I called. And I said, what is going on? I, said, I should say two months, six weeks. Six weeks later, I called. So what's going on the status of my camper? I don't get a phone call. No, they never do call me and tell me the status of my camper. I was going to call them. Uh, they said, well, we haven't even started on it yet. I said, what do you mean you haven't started on it yet? Well, it's been it's been six weeks. Well, we were waiting for approval. I said, what approval? We'll wait for approval for the awning to be fixed. I said, you already have approval. You people called me and told me it's been approved and told me to schedule an appointment to bring it in. And so I did. I wouldn't have brought it in without approval to be worked on. So what approval are you waiting on? So I had to call this. Um, I thought it was this was customer or can't be what I was dealing with you, sir. Because I called the pissed customer hotline, they call it, with Camping World. And I said, and they looked up my invoice, they looked up my name and all that. Yeah, Mr. Poole, it's all been approved. I said, well, you need to call the Wentzville store and tell them that it's been approved. Because they're, they haven't even started on my camper yet. And uh, so they they called, and evidently they can, Wentzville called me back and said, okay, yeah, we're going to start working on it. So that's been about two, three weeks, about three weeks ago. And I said, still hasn't been, you know, had, Nothing's been, I don't know anything about it, put it that way. I don't know anything about it. I dropped it off September 27th. They said it'd be two weeks, and here we are going on three months, and still don't know the status of my camper. Like I said, just one excuse after another is all they give me. Like I said, first bought the camper, no shows. Every time they worked on it, it's been one excuse after another why they can't get it done. They did try and fix the awning once. They said it was, you know, they tried raised it, and, um, and that it didn't do anything. And I, you know, they told me, oh, sir, I'm ready to go. Come pick it up. But I go to pick it up. Of course, the awning is still touching the slide out. And so that's not right. It shouldn't be like that. And I, again, again, already arguing four or five months. Like they finally get it in the shop September 27th. And here we are three months later. I still don't have the camper back. They did all they do is give you one excuse after another. Like I said, from changing the price of the camper to poor management to poor workmanship on the, on, on the service department. I mean, there cannot be, a, I've bought many vehicles, two wheels or four wheels, the off-road, on-road. I've never dealt with a more pathetic company in my life when it comes to customer service. They, they just have no clue on how to handle or how to do the job. They just so they, they went through two or three service managers. They went through at least two service managers they went through since I've been dealing with them, and they still can't get it right. I mean, like I said, from changing the price without telling me 
to argue over who's going to pay for what uh, between them and Forest River and trying to tell me that I was going to have to pay for it. I was like, no, I'm not paying for it. I bought this camper and knew it should, it should be working just fine. I said, then, oh, well, another thing, let's see, I'm jumping around. And one of the other issues that I had is on the slide out up front, there's a kick plate on the, in the kitchen, it's a front kitchen, a kick plate in the front kitchen below, below the stove. When you close the slide out, that kick plate was dragging the ground and it hit the, hit the I'm sorry, hit the floor and it started to fold under. Well, I had to hold up on the kick plate while the wife put the slide out in. Well, if you walk to the outside of the camper, you can see how the slide out is kind of jogged a bit or kind of tilted to one side a bit. And I showed them that and I showed it needed to be adjusted. Instead of adjusting it and doing, getting into maintenance, they did a quick fix. What they did was they took the kick plate and the inside of the camper, took it off, took it off and cut off about a quarter inch of the wood just so it, so it wouldn't hit, hit the floor anymore. Well, upon doing that, the gas lines for the stove underneath, up underneath there, and every time I pull the slide out in or out, here come the gas lines out from underneath the, the kick plate, underneath the, the slide out. So I got, I got to shove them back under every time I put the slide out out. I mean, just one thing after another, they will not fix it. They will not fix it right. They, whatever goes on with the camper, I don't get phone calls. I have to, to find the status of my camper, find out what's going on. I generally have to call the PISS customer hotline from Camping World to get them to call Wentzville, find out what's going on, and they call me back. I mean, the last thing I called was when I dropped off September 27th, they said they would have it done in two weeks. Two weeks passed, still wasn't done, cold weather was coming. I said, look, either you let me come in and winterize my camper, or you'll be paying for any damage to my camper for frozen water lines. Well, they did say they will, they did winterize the camper for free. So they said, I'm assuming it's been winterized. I haven't been down there. I don't know. I mean, if it hasn't been, we may be having another conversation. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm assuming they did winterize it. They, I got a voice recording or, or you know, they left me a voice recording or whatever, telling me that they winterized it. So I saved it or whatever. But, you know, they saved that a voicemail. And so I'm just saying that just in case it hasn't been winterized. But here, look, you guys said you would. I got the voicemail right here. If you didn't, then it's on you. But like I said, just changing the price to poor workmanship on the camper to de de if delayed service. Like I said, I think now with the fact that they've had it for three months, they realize they're not getting paid for it. Forest River said they're not going to pay for it. They're doing, camper was doing their own. So basically, I think what they're doing is whenever they have an open bay, they'll get my camper in there, do a little bit of work to it, bring it back out when somebody else is coming in with a, that's a paying customer. Ran it to me as warranty work. It should be paid for no matter what. I mean, I've already paid for it with the new camper. This is all. This is not extra stuff I'm asking for. This is just warranty work. It is all it is I'm asking for to get done. So it should be covered no matter what. I should be treated as a paying customer. Is it a paying customer for something extra? But this is more. I mean, this is what I paid for to begin with. But they just kind of put me on a back burner and don't want to. Don't want to do the work. Want to find excuses not to do the work. Want to find reasons to how to try and get me to pay the bill when. This is all warranty work. The camper's less than a year old. I mean, so, I mean, it's just one thing after another. And like I said, here we are today. So I dropped it off September 27th. It's December 4th. I have no clue on the status of my camper of what's going on. I mean, I, I don't know what, when it's going to be done, how long it's going to be, how much longer. And I told him, I said, the weather turns bad here in Illinois. I said, snow and ice on the road. I'm not coming to haul my camper. You'll be storing there for the winter. I'm not, I'm not hauling my camper back. On snow and icy roads. I mean, it, was, it should be parked at this time of year, not out running around. And so, right, that's that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for them to hear back about the status of my camper, when I'm going to get back, how much longer. They did, you know, they said they were going to do the body work. They had to raise the awning. That's what I'm fearful about now is the awning had to be raised about three or four inches. When the river, when the forest river manufactured it, they mounted it too low. So that was the whole deal. They had to raise it. I'm worried about the body work. How does the body work going to be? I was exactly because I said, but the last maintenance work they did on it with the floor of the kick plate, they just took a saw and cut off, like I said, a quarter inch off the bottom. And of course, the cable hoses are coming out now. So, I mean, I just don't, I don't trust their workmanship. Like I said, cutting, you know, put damage in my floor and everything else, I just don't trust in any way, shape, or form. I said, but they always have one excuse after another of why things aren't getting done. But that's just, that's what I've been dealing with. Uh, well, I did a lot. I'm not going to lie. I did a lot of yelling and screaming within the store. I mean, because they would try to put the fault on me. 
and then give me excuse after excuse. So a lot of yelling and complaining on the, at, at, inside the store itself with customers standing around telling them, hey, look, I, I would yell out my problem in the store with customers standing there saying, look, this is what I'm going through. I suggest you people go out the door and go find another dealership because this is what they do here. They didn't like that too much. I called the so-called piss customer hotline. That is it's a sign that sits on the service desk of the kind of big world CEOs. If this customer, this consumer, call this hotline, call this number, it tells you to do. And that's why I've been dealing with one-on-one. -on -one. That's how I've been getting stuff done. And I've also threatened, we have a local news station here, Contact 2, Fox 2 News. I said, look, I've con contact a local news station. If you can't answer my questions, if you can't give me reasons why you won't do the work of my camper, maybe you can answer the questions in front of cameras or Fox 2 News and tell and look, let the St. Louis metropolitan area know how Camping World treats its customers. And what they told me, their answer to that was, we suggest you don't do that, Steve. We suggest you don't cause a conflict because it may take even longer to get your work done then. But that was Camping World's answer to that. When I, when I thought about bringing, when I talked about bringing news, Channel 2 News in there, the so-called you paid for it uh, service that they provide on, on contact two. And they said, well, don't do that. It may even take you longer to get your camper fixed. So that, that to me, that was a threat. Like you do that and you, you won't even touch your camper. I mean, so that, that's, that was that camping world's answer to that. And let's go to